speaking of legends, um, bro, you so you got to do the last David Bowie album, Black Star, unbelievable. Um, I have so many questions about that, but I also I think it, it ties into like because I feel like you on Saint Vincent was you doing Saint Vincent, and I feel like you doing David Bowie was David Bowie working with you, mm. where it it was still like drum and bassy or it was like it felt like your electronica kind of vibe and like not just like straight you know omar hakeem bowie rhythms or anything like that right. it was very much stylized still mm -hmm. for you so how did you get the gig with bowie what was it like working with bowie let's talk let's talk for a minute yeah um so let's see it all started from his relationship with this woman named Maria Schneider, who's an amazing composer, arranger in New York, and she has this incredible, kind of like a big band, but it's not traditional jazz in any way. But he was a fan of hers, and I think he just approached her, like, hey, could, could we want to work on something together? So they had this one song, and uh, there was something in the song that reminded her of me or something. Um, and she called me and said, Hey, I'm working on the song with David Bowie. Would you want to do it? I, and I said, yes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, um, and then, so we sure. did that one song. So it was me uh, playing with her band. You know, we did a day at um, Avatar in New York and he was there and he was great. But we did a couple of rehearsals first. And um, what was that like? Even there, like the initial meeting and collabing with him. Oh, it was incredible. So, well, let's see. Okay. Uh, she brought him to the 55 bar to hear us, which Perfect. is, which is wild. First, so there's like, before you met him. Yeah. So he got to see you play first. Yeah. So, so ideal situation. Yeah. Well, it, that was the thing. It was like, you're, you're not wrong in that. Um, it was like, because he hired us as a band. Yeah. It's it's Donnie McCaslin playing saxophone, Jason Lindner playing keys, Tim LaFave playing bass, and myself. We had been playing. We made a couple records under Donnie's name. Yep. I had been Love those albums. Everyone listen to those. Thank you. I had been playing with Jason and Tim in like different versions of beat music for years. So we all had a long relationship. And he hired us as a band. So... Yeah, you're you're correct in saying that like he was the new guy, which is kind of <laughs> trippy, you know. Um amazing. But yeah, that first track because Donnie was in Maria's band. So mm. the those first rehearsals, what's that rehearsal space on like 27th Street? Uh Euphoria. Mm. I don't know if you know, it's a normal little rehearsal space and it was like David and Tony Visconti um who was producing the yep. track and then Maria it was basically the rhythm section and then like saxophone and trombone just to start. Maria hadn't yet done the full arrangement. So it was to like work out ideas and he was just so kind and it was quite normal and all these things, you know, he was there early and left late and was like, Hey, can you run that section again? I just want to record it so I could, you know, write to it at home or work on it at home. Just all about the music, you know, and super kind Wow. And uh, yeah, so that day in the studio was great. And then um, I think it was even Maria's idea. I think he wanted to do more stuff with her. And and she said, you should just do a record with those guys. And I was like, OK. So um, he had reached out to Donnie. Donnie, w w you know, after they met at that session, that was he started sending him music. And then we started making the record. You know, that was at the Magic Shop in New York, which is now closed. But we did like three one-week sessions. Mm. And uh, it was amazing. But yeah, he really encouraged us to like do our thing. And yeah. and on several occasions would reference like, hey, I love on that beat music. You know, we made this weird record like eight years ago, the, the Los Angeles improvisations. Jeff Babco. Tim, myself, and Troy Ziegler. And we just improvised, and I... I saw you do that at Blue Whale. Okay, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. So he would reference that record. He'd be like, oh, yeah, I really love what you did here. Maybe you could try stuff like that. It's like, oh, my God, David Bowie's sitting at home, like, listening to this record, you know? Um, so so that, many incredible things yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. So it was... Um, it really would, felt super comfortable and intuitive. And I think, you know, some people were like, you know, uh, many people were asking like were you nervous 
And it's like maybe there were like flashes of that, but yeah. any time there was a moment of like, holy shit, this is a David Bowie record, I would look out and it's like Tim, Jason, Don, Tim say, telling some dumb joke to like, you know, and it's just like, oh, I'm with my homies. It's your family. Yeah. yeah. And and then that's David Bowie over there. And then the you new know? guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing pretty uh, good. But, you know, when you, I'm no expert on his, on his career, but when you look back, like he, that's not, um, it's pretty consistent with like the young Americans era. It's mm. like hires this like sick band that's already kind of a community. And he inserts himself into that to writes new songs and gives that, that thing. And then kind of the let's dance thing. And then the, yeah. this and the, you know, he, when he would jump around, it would be, uh, it's not so inconsistent with what we did. And I think the whole point, like Tony Visconti had a funny, kind of a funny line that I read in, in an interview. He was like, yeah, our idea for this record was instead of hiring rock guys to play jazz, we hired some jazz guys to play rock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's, you know, uh, obviously oversimplified, but also that's kind of cool, you know? Oh, it's so cool. And, and that must have felt, so validating because he loves you for your creative self and your music. It was a, a huge license that also alleviated any pressure. It's like, exactly. no, just do your thing. It's exactly. Like, and he was like egging us on. I remember a couple of times, you know, all the songs had demos with just like program parts. And I would try to be true to the demo, honor his ideas. And we would do a take and be like, okay, cool. But like, go. He even... <laughs> He even said one time, he was like, Mark, I know what you're capable of. You know, something like that. Amazing. So kind of like literally, uh, you know, egging us on yeah. and being like, no, go, go. Do you. Because that 55 bar gig was like, we were just throwing down, playing too loud and too much. And so it was, that was really fun. Amazing, dude. Yeah. 